One of the coolest things that Microsoft added to SQL Server 2000 was the ability to do a standby server. Now talk about a poor man's cluster. Uh, this thing is really cool and there's a lot of things, you can get a lot of mileage out of a standby server. Basically a standby server is simply a server that we're going to restore backups to. So we're just restoring backups to a different server and keeping this second server close to identical to our original server. Now there's two types of standby servers that you can configure with SQL Server 2005. One is a cold standby server and the other is a warm standby server. And I'll show you what I mean by cold and warm. First up, with a cold standby server, you have your regular production SQL Server and then you get another box and you load it with another copy of SQL Server so you do have the expense of licensing on a second copy of SQL Server. And then you are simply going to transfer log files. You're just going to back up the, the log files on the production server and manually go restore them on the standby server. Now you'll have to do this manually, but keep in mind now you've got a server over here on standby that is almost identical to this one. Now there's a little bit of latency between these two obviously, but on a failure on the production server you simply go to the standby server, restore the last log with recovery, take this one off the network, and you have a server here. Now what's really cool is while the standby is functioning as standby and the production is still the production, this server can be treated as a read-only database because if you remember on the restore you had with recovery, with no recovery, and then there was an option out there called standby. And when I restore a transaction log to a machine, and choose the standby option, it doesn't totally recover the database. It puts it kind of in this pseudo half recovered, half not recovered mode, and it allows people to connect to this standby server and run queries. Now this is fabulous for like accounting queries, any kind of historical queries that the data doesn't have to be totally 100% up to date and it offloads some of those queries off of your production SQL server. So you really get uh, two advantages here. Now let's talk about how to create a cold standby server. First we're going to install SQL server on a new box. Then we're going to copy all databases to the new server. There's a copy database wizard. Then we will periodically manually apply transaction logs to that new server. Okay, you'll have to decide how often. And in the meantime, we'll use the standby server as a read-only server. Then if we ever have a problem with our production server, we will simply switch them out. And I'll talk about that in just a minute. The second option, a warm standby, this is really cool. We're going to take our production server that we had. Then we're going to add a standby server out there again, add another box, another license of SQL Server. And now though, we're going to have log shipping. We're going to set up log shipping that will automatically, periodically, it can be almost instantaneous or there can be some latency, it will automatically push the transaction log back up across the network onto the standby server. So we're basically not touching it. It's automatically being updated. Much, much better. You still have the same advantages of a standby. Now, let's talk about how to create a warm standby. Very similar to cold. We're going to install SQL in a new box copy all the databases to the new server, configure log shipping to the new server on this one, and then use the standby as read-only if we'd like. Now, watch the terminology. The original server and all the standby stuff is called the source server, and the standby server is called the destination server. So you'll see some of that in the Microsoft technology. Now, what happens when we have a failure on our source server or our primary server? Well, to get the standby server up and running, we're going to go to the source server and apply the most, or, or back up the most recent log file, take it to the standby server and apply it. And we'll apply it with recovery. Then we'll take the production server off the network and rename it because we don't want anybody accidentally putting it back on the network with that old name. Then we're going to go to our standby server and rename it to the name of our original production server so that on the network it appears to be the original primary server and then we just verify that people can hit it. And then the smart thing to do is repair the problem on the original primary server and then configure it as a standby and begin to log ship back the other way to that one. Now you'll have to test to see how long it takes you. You will have some downtime, half an hour to maybe two hours while you configure the new 
standby server to be the original and so forth. But if you practice that in the test lab, you can get that down to about half an hour and you're up and running. So that's the um, that's the basis for standby. In the next uh, video, I'll talk about log shipping just a little bit and show you how to set that up.